Oh, Welcome all my aliens, apes, and zombies. I'm so happy to be here today, being an active participant in the NFT space for a very long time. And right now, we can all be active participants. Real quick, just raise a hand. Put on the thinking caps for the first time you bought an NFT. Remember that time. Put your hands up if you remember that time when you bought that first NFT. Keep them up. Keep them up. All right. On the count of three, we're all going to clap. Just on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Awesome, that sounded good. Let's do that again. Get those hands up again. Even if you didn't, don't own an NFT, we're here, we're participating. Ready? On the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Excellent. I love it. I love it. This was the first time, I got a slide here. First time I bought an NFT. First time I bought an NFT was in 2020. CryptoPunk. And that CryptoPunk I got when times were really, really grim. Really grim. Ethereum was about $200. Yep, that's right. Ethereum about $200. What's Ethereum today? They don't have their phones out. What's the Ethereum price right now? Anyone have it? Two, over $2,000? Raise your hand if you like that Ethereum price over $2,000. It's pretty good, right? Let's get them clapping one more time. Ready? One, two, three. That's right. And that's when I got in, when times were tough. 2020, when the market was crashing because of the pandemic, everything, everyone thought, Everything was going to go down to zero. When there was blood in the streets, I became a shark. I was an active participant in something I was learning about, and that was Web3. Within that, I figured, why not maybe invest in the digital rookie cards of the NFTs, which was a crypto punk. But there again, none of this is financial advice. You're listening to a crypto punk with a clown nose on stage, so, you know, choose your path. But I choose my, my path wisely. And within that, found tons of friends within the space. And being the active participant here at NFT NYC, it grew and grew. Started off on a stage at Edison Ballroom in 2021, went over to the main stage over at Radio City Music Hall in 2022, hopped the pond over to NFT London, and here we are again today. Well, between then and now, a couple things have happened. Within that time frame, unfortunately, I was, well, I had my CryptoPunk taken from me. And when you walk around dressing like a crypto punk, something that me and our family, my personal family, have looked into, collecting, buying, trying to, trying to build. I mean, heck, my son dresses me. He finds out what's cool. He knows what's cool. Old person behind this tassel hat, you know, I don't know what's really what's cool anymore. So why not ask the youth? So my son helped create the IP that you see around me right now. Tassel hat, shades, big clown nose. But when it was taken away, it took more than just my family to help get it back. It took a true NFT community. And it took a lot of members, active participants, very similar to you, aliens, apes, and zombies in the crowd, who are active participants within this Web3 space. So backstage, I have a couple friends that have been active participants in this Web3 community. And with that, I'm going to call them out right now. But we're going to do the same thing. We've got to give them one large clap, just like you aliens, apes, and zombies did prior, to get them back out here, all right? But we know him, a first one up on stage. We're gonna give him an out of the world clap. We've seen him with his glasses upside down. Maybe we get a clown nose on there. But let's give one warm cosmic clap to Mike Mango. Ready? One, two, three. Yo, 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 yo. He said, he, did you not hear Crypto Novo say Mike Mango? So help me God, he just said Mike Mike. Me and you have known each other, Crypto Novo, for how long, Mike Mango? Pa -pa pow. Way too long, way Ladies too long. Ladies and gentlemen. Two clowns, pa 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 pa. Just kidding. Pow! Right, right on. And yeah. being active participant, the uh, active participant, participant in this space, helped me get my crypto punk back. He was out there. One of the first things he says, and maybe we can revisit this in a little bit. But you didn't want to be part of this space if I didn't get my crypto punk back. Kind of crazy to think about that. We're gonna revisit that in one minute. because I want to bring out the next person that helped me get, get my crypto punk back. Larry D, come on out here, Larry. Right. Let's give Larry one clap. Get those hands open again. Ready? One, two, three. Yeah, there we go, Larry. Nice stage presence. Looks like you've been on stage a couple times, huh? Just once or twice. So Larry, thank you very much uh, there again for providing your platform so I can get the message out there and talking about kind of what happened in this space. So very lovely, I appreciate it. Next up, Avery Piper. Avery, come on out, one clap for Avery. Get those hands open, ready? One, two, three. Avery, 
Avery so and I go way back. Mm. We started working together when we used to work at Vayner NFT. We used to work at Vayner 3. Now we're off in our different uh, adv advances within this Web3 NFT space. But there again, someone who, ca who came to me reaching out, how can I help? How can we get this crypto pump back? How can, we, how can we do this together? And all of that is through active participation. So my friends up here are active participants within this Web3 space. But I want to go back to knowing a little bit more about you guys, and so our crowd knows a little bit about more, a little bit more about you. I myself got very lucky to get into a crypto punk very early in the game. Why don't you just say a little bit about yourself and maybe the first NFT or Web3 thing that you experienced when coming into this Web3 space? Mike, you want to go first? Oh, cool. So, uh, greetings and salutations, my people. Thank you for being here today. My name is Mike Mongo. I co-founded with Ami Gendron and Roger Sampaio the 30th project on the Ethereum blockchain, Crypto Titties. I'm rocking the sweatshirt right now. When we started Crypto Titties, it was, I just wanna just give this one part because I always say Crypto Titties and people laugh like that's a funny thing, like we don't have breasts and that kind of thing. And you know what, the funny thing is, it's usually guys who are doing that, but whatever. So uh, what happened was when we did the project is the person who is the artist, Ami Gendron, his mom developed breast cancer while we were doing the project. We were basing it off crypto, crypto kitties. And then what it turned into is the very first project for social good on the, on the blockchain. And we, yes, so, so la last year we gave 120,000 USD to the breasties.org for care initiatives for people with breast cancer. This is what is possible for all of us. That's what it takes to be an active participant right there. He saw a problem, found the solution, being an active participant. Uh, active participant. And, and his mom is fine now, pow, pow, pow. That's what we love to and hear. And his mom is fine, yeah, that's a cheer, yeah. Avery, how about yourself? Tell us a little bit about maybe the first NFT that you experienced in, in the Web3, and then also a little bit about what you're doing in the, in the Web3 world right now. Definitely, I think, um, the first NFT that I ever purchased, I don't think it even exists on IPFS anymore. It's one of those um, ones that existed for a couple weeks, maybe, or uh, maybe that more than, a little more than that. But um, yeah, it's, it's, I kind of got in here, and, and it was one of those things where I, I kind of accepted right away, like, you know, this money, let's see where it goes, but it's really not about making money. I, I, I kind of just wanted to go through the process of buying one. Um, and I don't forget the name of it. I, I forget the name of the NFT, but um, what I'm up to now is creating these handmade t-shirts, which I physically draw on, um, and they <clears throat> kind of are on purpose an antithesis of the NFT space, um, or a, a lot of what projects have become, which is create thousands of NFTs and you know, hope to deliver some value later. I kind of wanted to flip that and kind of make the t-shirt the utility, because the t-shirt a lot of the time is the, the handout, I feel like a lot of these projects have, not to like, you know, put a negative um, spin on it, but I, I definitely, um, yeah, I spent a bunch of time making art, and. This, this project is very much a um, yeah, reflection of my life, and uh, I spend a lot of time writing graffiti and doing things that I shouldn't have been doing, and it kind of became a point where you know, I, need to get a real, I needed to get a real job, and I needed to like, start making art on the side and see how that worked, and I'm going on for a minute now, but thank you. Active participant trying to build your own future with apparel, with clothes, and these clothes, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna rep it a little bit. He had the idea of coming to NFT NYC, getting shirts out to, you know, alpha people. And kind of what happened, just maybe tell people what happened a little bit yesterday where some of these shirts uh, got distributed to some of the people. Yeah, th there's actually what, something interesting, and I, I know uh, Larry can speak to this too. Um, kind of the serendipity of this entire event is, is what I think is the most valuable to me. The idea that a lot of people are here together with uh, like minds, like mentalities, and you can walk by, like I, I had great conversations with people just getting water, just like saying what's up, and, and people are here to learn. And I, yeah, it's, it's all been serendipitous is my point. Like I, I obviously, like I spoke with people and I t told them about the t-shirts who are very influential in the space, but at the same time, like I spoke with my friends and I spoke with you, um, uh, my best friend. And I, I think that's what projects should be about is like, how can we make you know, even a, a project of 24 t-shirts, how can we make that all inclusive and, and a reflection of like a person and a dream? 24 t-shirts, each one has one word to a seed phrase. You have to find the other people with the t-shirts, add those seed phrases together and who knows what's inside. It sounds like a Forrest Gump story, but speaking of Forrest Gump stories, I mean, you, Larry, you have stories, a ton of stories and 
upon stories. A little bit about your first experience in the NFT space, and then also give us one of those, you know, musically enhanced Forrest Gump stories that you've had throughout your years, you know, just being an active participant in life. Okay, so I'm going to start with the past and come up to the present. Um, I have a friend who played at Woodstock with Hendrix, so that's pretty, it doesn't get better. Like the original I, Woodstock? Or I, like yes, the, 69. Oh, okay. Hendrix Sorry. died after the original Woodstock, probably from playing there and seeing all the people in the mud, but he calls me... It was a me, day just like this. He, he calls me the Forrest Gump of rock and roll, which is complimentary. I, I don't have anyone dying, and I wasn't in the military, but I've been in the business for a while and worked with a lot of people from... The Beach Boys to David Bowie to Robert Plant to Sammy Hagar and Sean Lennon and, and many, many others and sold about 30 million records. And so what interested me in this space, having been in it and signed to all the labels and being on tour, is that when I walked into my first NFT NYC um, conference, it reminded me of the Ramones playing at CBGB's in the 70s. Like you could cut the air with a knife. It was so much like danger, excitement, surprise, uh, disruption, like, and, and this is what happens. What's on the fringe always somehow slowly gets pulled into the center. So you're watching some cheesy TV show and like some like, like Valley girl is wearing like a Ramon shirt as if she even knows who they are. So I feel like we're in a moment when lightning is striking, you know, that there are moments in history, like in the 15th century, when you had Da Vinci and, Le and Michelangelo and Botticelli and everybody in Florence, Italy, and they all created like a magic that has lasted to this day. That's what's happening here. Everybody here is a future architect. So I'm in it and, uh, and releasing my first NFT. I've collected, only collected NFTs for, for the first two years. And now I'm releasing, uh, in the future, very soon, a David Bowie track uh, that had never been released and was recorded 20 years ago. I've been sitting on it for 20 years. I found Gala Music, the right people to release it, and we're just fine-tuning the thing, and we didn't want to step on the original one that, that was 40 years ago today. So to honor the original one, we're letting them go, and then we're releasing it very shortly. My first NFT was Time Pieces. I love Time Magazine, I love the people there. And when they started doing Time Magazine covers, I said, I'm gonna come in and support my friends. So I don't buy and flip NFTs. I buy work by my friends to be on their team and to be part of the community. That's being an active participant, bringing other people along for, with you for that ride. And, you know, the active participant from, you know, your journeys as growing up, you know, walking into those venues for the first time, seeing, you know, the, the, the first time uh, a performance happened, but able to take that past experience and really bring it back into life with the new technology that is presented to us. And being an active participant is a huge um, aspect of it. You know, for me being an active participant in it is dressing up, tossing on the artifact shoes, getting the custom threads from friends that I met here today and met other times. I got pins I put on. There again, we're trying to help, help expose more people to it, onboard more people to it, enjoy ourselves within this NFT space because when around 2021, when people were coming here for NFT NYC after pandemic, people wanted to get out of the house. People wanted to release. There's so much negativity and toxicity in the news, in the air, and you had to find that outlet. And that outlet was being an active participant. Mike, question for you. Word of advice. Aquarius. <laughs> Word of advice for someone who wants to be an active participant in this space. Maybe he's a little shy. Maybe he doesn't have flair. You know, um, just a suggestion to, for them. You know, to. I mean, I always say aliens, apes, and zombies because I want to incorporate everyone. Doesn't matter if you're a male, a female. I don't care your age. As long as you're a positive member in this world, I want to be able to help you. And there's tons of more positive than negative people in the world. But you know, maybe one piece of advice for someone that might be a little skittish about, you know, just being an active participant. So here's here's the game, my people. It's real simple. Do what you love with who you love and help others. You find, you do what you love with who you love and help others. And you, you do what you love with who you love and you help others and you cannot fail. It is 100%. So, so find the community or the team or the people that you wanna work with. Find, it, find the thing 
that get you excited about waking up in the morning. I mean, I, I see peer grown-ups right here, and just like, yeah, I, I, I see this young titan over there. It's like, like that's the future over there, that person. And uh, when, when I when I am uh, when I don't see myself in a project, I don't want to be part of that project. If I see if I enter into a space, I get invited to these VIP rooms, and if I'm in a VIP room and there's not somebody who's black in the entire room, that's not my room. Kevin Rose, who I like and who I've admired this entire time, the first six people on Moonbird's team were all men. Yo, come on. We're all here, right? We're all in this together, right? Yeah. I'm, I mean, like, like, so my people. Avery, Yo. active participation. You were a little bit shy. Like, hey, you know what? Nova, I want to get my apparel out there. Like, what's the best way to do it? Like, just do it. Go up to the alphas in the game. You see G Money, go talk to him. You see, just go talk to him. All you can do is just start the conversation. And then being an active participant, well, tell us how the shirt sales have been going in this last couple of days. It's kind of crazy to think about it. Amazing. I think, um, and something, I don't want to get super emotional here, but if you guys get a chance to meet Novo, definitely say hi to him. I think um, he's changed my life. Sorry. I'll give him a second there. You know, I'm just trying to help AP, you know, you, you helped me tremendously. Some, some things that people don't know, I didn't own my own computer up until about almost, I have my two year anniversary of owning my own computer. I'm well into my 40s, never really needed it. Um, even when I bought my CryptoPunks three years ago, I didn't even have a computer. I figured it all out on my phone, Discord on the phone, MetaMask on my phone. And just to make that bridge, um, I mean, we had still a computer labs when I went to college, but he was able to help me with just the aspects that he learned in college. Um, setting up a Google meeting, wow. I didn't even really know how to do that until I met you. So it's back yeah. and forth, my friend. <laughs> no, well, this is, yeah, one of those things too is like, I feel like you really know your strengths, you know? And like, you just lean the fuck into them. And I think everybody on this stage. Watch like, your language, I'm a teacher. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, but yeah, everybody on the stage, like something, there's just so, so many subtle and, and not so subtle things that really have inspired me, especially by everybody on the stage. You, you can see everybody here has like an identifier, right? Mike with the glasses, Larry usually wears something a little flashy here. Like everybody, everybody has their thing. And like, that, I, I feel like, especially being here, I felt like I, I've wanted to wear things like you have. Like I've wanted to wear a shirt every day. I've wanted, I want to be the guy that people look at and they're like, that's what that guy does. I know him. And, and I like those ASIC Tigers. Thank you. I work, I work for them as well, but actually I shouldn't have said that. Um, but yeah, I, uh, yeah, I don't represent them. Um, anyways, Novo, you, you, have, you have a tremendous impact and you really have changed everybody's life on this stage. So I, I know you asked me some other shit, but like that's what matters. Again, language. Um, with that, you know, AP, it really doesn't matter because you're an active participant in the space. You're going to do what is best for you, but it's helping others. And, you know, Crypto Novo is one person, but there's tons of Crypto Novos and Crypto Novoettes out there. You We're know? all Crypto Novo. That's right. And, you know, with that, I'll maybe just transition to Larry, because, you know, Larry, just seeing how you dress, I mean, you're, I always say you're the best dressed person in the room. You always give me the same, you know, feedback back, but, you know, sometimes just going out there and putting your best jacket on, your best foot forward is the best thing to do in this space. What is your recommendation for someone with your experience who's been an active participant in lots of things in life? So, when I first went on my first clubhouse, I was terrified to speak. Now, I've been on stages opening for Queen on their last stadium tour in front of 80,000 people. That's easy. But getting on stage on Clubhouse and then after that, my first few Twitter spaces and suddenly you're like, am I unmuting the mic or am I like disconnecting the phone? Like, am I, you know, we're all every day born anew. And we all have this unique possibility of what can happen. When I started wanting to podcast, I, I couldn't just podcast. Like, I had to ask, like, Kara Swisher, like, like, Miss Podcast USA, like, how do I start podcasting? And she just said, start speaking. And then I asked Alec Baldwin, how do I start podcasting? And he said, why don't you just start talking? So my advice to people in this room, and a lot of people who are in tech are, are more introverted, is just, just come in, just be here, just, you know, people will find you, and, and as, as Mike has said, and as Avery has said, there's a synchronicity that happens here. 
that is beyond our control. Like, you call it life. I'll, I'll say it's like life, the, the rhythm current of a river. You know, I have a friend who's a colleague. I didn't get to see him. We were in Times Square looking at the things. He just walked up, you know. So trust the universe. And one of my big messages that kind of breaks me up is just we're, we're taught and we look out at the world full of so much horror and darkness and loss and sorrow. And, and what I know in my heart is, is that the, the universe is kind. The universe is actually kind. Novo lost his, his, his identity in Web3. And without him even knowing, people came together and just said, we're going to get it back for you. He couldn't have done this by himself. I think they said, F you, we're going to get this back from you. Yep. Yeah. And so my, my message to all of you is, is the universe is actually kind. Just show up. There's a lot more positive people in this world than the two or three negative people you might hear on the FOMO. I want to bring up another positive person uh, backstage. His name is Ben Klein. Let's give him one clap here. Ben, come on out. Ready? One, two, three. Wow, you guys are good. Um, ben and I walked a couple miles or hours in our shoes at NFT London where he was talking to me about his uh, NFT projects, which was a movie. And um, from there, we've just built a bond talked and he's actually just producing kind of what happens in my life. I've got a great story. I want to share it with others and tell others, but you know, Ben, why don't you take the mic and tell a little bit about what, what's going to happen here in a second or two. Sure. It's a privilege to be up here with such amazing guys. Um, thank you all for being here. Essentially my company, Muggsy Media Corp, we're trying to do, tell the craziest and most profound stories to be told here in the Web3 space. Our last project, Wacko Worms revolutionized the way people use the blockchain to perpetuate the realism of found footage cinema verite. That led me to meet this amazing man right here. And now we're doing the Crypto Novo documentary. And we actually have a world premiere right now of a teaser of the documentary. It's about two minutes long and we can roll it. Let's boost the audio. I hope you guys enjoy. CryptoPunk 3706 is based on trying to find something to do which is cool in the space in IRL. Looking different is sometimes what turns heads in a room. How much money did you make through NFTs? Oh man, this is all on chain so you guys can look it up. Uh, right around 5.7 million. You know, it's one of those things where if you had a time machine, you'd go back and warn yourself. started turning into almost a religion in the sense you'd have the same people meeting at the same time. Haha, -ha, there's a clown that lost all of his money. Hey, I took a risk, I took a chance. I was contacted, believe it or not, by the FBI about this. And they wanted to know more about what happened in this case because it was such a high value amount of NFTs that got stolen. How much did I make or what the value in the wallet was is two different things because I haven't really cashed anything out. Welcome all my aliens, apes, and zombies. Welcome to the hood. Those of you who don't know, prior to me becoming Crypto Novo, I was a physical education teacher. And this documentary is important because I have one hell of a story, and I've had one awesome life filled with great stories, filled with my friends. And I bring my friends along the whole time for this because you can't tell a story if you don't have friends around to listen. I'm just a normal person, you know, wearing a clown nose, a tassel hat, trying to help others. So I still have a hot mic, I'm sorry. Hey, real quick, everyone open your hands like an alligator. Open them up, just like this. We're gonna clap at the end here. This one is for everyone in the NFT community, every single one of you, because you can't spell community without unity. So on the count of three, we're gonna clap for that community. Ready? One, two, three. I'm Crypto Novo, stay positive and love life. Peace! Peace! <laughs> yeah. Yo, one more thing I want to say to everybody. Participation is showing up, and you all showed up at NFP 20, NFP NYC 2023. There's all these people. There's hey. all these people that did it, and you rock. You do rock. Awesome. <laughs>